Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Tuan. I'm a cardiologist and electrophysiologist in Penang Adventist Hospital. Okay, uh, cardiac ar arrhythmia refers to uh, diseases of uh, the heart which involve abnormal heart rhythm. Uh, for example, it could be due to the heart rhythm going irregularly, going too fast or going too slowly. Symptoms of cardiac arrhythmia can be quite variable. It can range from palpitations uh, to chest discomfort, breathlessness, dizziness, and in some cases, some patients may even describe uh, having fainting episodes. Um, so, so it's hard to say, but uh, the, the list that I just gave you uh, would include the more common type of symptoms that uh, we see uh, from our patients. Uh, so cardiorrhythmia can affect uh, people of all ages. It uh, can affect children, adults or even you know, uh, senior citizens. So um, it, it's, it's difficult to say, um, but uh, we know that certain types of uh, heart rhythm problems can affect the elderly uh, more often. But generally speaking, it's not restricted to a specific age group. Okay, cardiac arrhythmia can be treated in a number of ways. Um, uh, it also depends on the type of cardiac arrhythmia or the heart rhythm problem that the patient has. Uh, for example, if the heart rhythm is going too fast or abnormally uh, or, or fast or irregular, uh, then the treatment can be uh, medication. Uh, if medication works, then that's fine, we can usually continue with that. If not, then we can sometimes also consider um, treatment with uh, radiofrequency ablation procedure. Um, so that's for fast and irregular type of uh, heart rhythm problems. So for patients with uh, slow heart rhythm problems, then uh, usually there isn't really a lot of medication options available uh, and, and in some cases we will need to think about a permanent pacemaker. Okay, it depends on the, the type of cardiac arrhythmia. There are certain types of cardiac arrhythmia that uh, may be congenital or genetic. Of course, uh, we can't do so much about those. Um, uh, but there are certain conditions or risk factors uh, that could increase one's risk of cardiac arrhythmia. Uh, and maybe steps can be taken to address these risk factors. For example, uh, conditions such as high blood pressure, uh, being overweight. Uh, these are all not good for your health in general and can also indirectly increase one's risk of cardiac arrhythmia. So, so maybe to prevent or lower one's risk, uh, we need to address these risk factors that I just mentioned. Um, another common question that quite often comes up is whether caffeine or coffee can cause uh, arrhythmia. Uh, I think that is a, a, a question that is quite common and it's also very difficult to answer because I feel it's quite subjective because uh, everybody responds to caffeine differently and uh, in fact clinical studies have been carried out uh, in, in large numbers of patients which have not been able to prove conclusively that there is any link between caffeine and arrhythmia. So, so I think it's at the end of the day it's going to be subjective and I would advise my patients that if they are very sensitive to caffeine for example it causes them to have palpitations or you know feel they feel unco uncomfortable after taking coffee then of course my advice to them would be to cut down and control their caffeine intake. So uh, I think my, my general advice to the public would be to stay healthy either through um, leading a, a healthy lifestyle by eating healthily uh, exercising regularly or even through uh, just uh, regular follow-ups with your doctor for any known medical conditions. Um, uh, if it's, uh, if with regards to any heart problems or particularly heart rhythm problems, uh, sometimes these can be hard to diagnose. Um, if there is any doubt, then please always seek the advice of your cardiologist or electrophysiologist.